Welcome to Holy Heartbeats. My name is Nathan, and I narrate Christ-centered testimonies from all over the world. These testimonies include rapture and end times visions, near-death experiences, encounters with angels and demons, God, Jesus, and even Satan himself. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you are fond of listening to these types of stories, and let me know what you think about these testimonies in the comments section below. Furthermore, for those who want to share their personal testimonies, visions, and revelations from God, you can send us your own stories at holyheartbeat7 at gmail.com. I will be very honored to read your testimony which may inspire, edify, and encourage a lot of people in their personal journey of faith with the Lord Jesus Christ. To all of my subscribers, I always try my best to read all of your precious comments, and I'm very grateful for your never-ending support. I pray for the Lord Jesus Christ to always protect you and keep you in perfect peace amidst the chaos in this world. Now, without any further delay, let's dive right into today's story. Dear friends, we will be sharing the second part of the extraordinary testimony of Caesar Sandoval from Honduras. Just a gentle warning. His testimony may be difficult to accept and or upsetting to some people, so viewer discretion is strongly advised. Furthermore, I strongly advise that you take his testimony with a grain of salt and cross-reference his claims with the teachings of the Holy Bible. Lastly, I will be narrating Caesar's testimony from his perspective. Let's get started. Welcome, dear brothers and sisters, to this solemn hour. Let us give glory and honor to our Lord Jesus Christ. I find myself filled with fear and trembling in my body, soul, and spirit. The Lord has shown me a vision in the early morning of January 30th, 2018, and it has left me deeply frightened. I am here to share this revelation with you so that you may heed the warning from the Lord. My dear brothers and friends, the Lord Jesus Christ, who was by my side, spoke these words to me. You must tell the church what I am about to reveal to you, for the time of grace has come to an end. The Lord took me on a journey to hell, where we arrived at a place with a massive gate. With a single gesture, the Lord opened the gate and we entered a dimension of absolute darkness, teeming with sinister demons. The Lord Jesus explained to me, this part of the underworld is known as the Valley of Demons. The devil often frequents this place. Curious, I asked the Lord, why does Satan visit this place from time to time? The Lord replied, Have you noticed that there are no lost souls or torments in this section of hell? The demons residing here are not occupied with tormenting the damned, unlike in other parts of hell. Instead, they are preparing for the Great Tribulation. They will soon rise to the surface of the earth to torment the living and the inhabitants of the world. That is why the devil comes here, to anticipate and prepare for the approaching great tribulation, for time is running short. The Lord continued, These demons have been locked away in this place for thousands and thousands of years, untouched by the light of day. They are being readied by the devil to wreak havoc during the great tribulation. As I witnessed the horror that awaits those who remain on earth, the Lord wept. Matthew chapter 24 verses 20 to 22 declares, Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath, for then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive, but for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. Tears fell upon the Lord's robe, and I was moved by his sorrowful weeping. Then the Lord spoke these words to me, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth in those days, for my Holy Spirit will be taken away from them. I will be unable to intervene on their behalf. Satan, the devil, will become the father of humanity. The Lord lamented for the inhabitants of the earth during those days of great tribulation, unlike anything the world has ever seen. These demons you see before you, the Lord said, are the most vile, cruel, and wicked of all the demons in hell. 
Beloved brothers, let us heed the voice of the Lord, for he declares that the time has come to an end. The time of grace is over. In a vision granted by the Lord, I beheld a small church where the worship of Jesus Christ was taking place. The congregation was gathered together, singing and praising the Lord with great fervor. Among them were the pastor, his wife, families with young children, and expectant mothers. Mothers, brothers, and friends were also present, sharing in the joyous worship. As the church service progressed, a startling phenomenon unfolded before my eyes. One by one, brothers and sisters began to vanish into thin air. The pastor, who was leading the congregation, disappeared amidst the worshippers. The praise leader, too, vanished without a trace. Even the young ones, children, and unborn babies nestled in the wombs of expectant mothers were taken away. Remarkably, the clothes of those who vanished remained behind. The sudden disappearance left the remaining brothers and sisters in a state of shock and confusion. Their singing ceased abruptly, replaced by wide-eyed astonishment. They frantically searched for their loved ones who had vanished, unable to comprehend what had just transpired. The absence of the praise leader and the pastor added to their bewilderment. As the realization dawned upon them that a significant number of their fellow church members had been raptured, fear and confusion gripped their hearts. They pondered the meaning behind these events, with some proclaiming loudly, This is the return of the Lord. The rapture has occurred. The Lord has taken his people. He has come for his church. We have been foretelling this. The hearts of the remaining congregation were shattered, and they were consumed by deep confusion. They repented for their sins, seeking solace in their remorse. I witnessed a young woman, left behind in the church, weeping and desperately searching for her parents. They had been raptured, and had ascended to meet the Lord in the air. In the aftermath of the church's rapture, I observed the believers and others running from place to place, their hearts filled with a mixture of fear and desperation. Beloved brother, I witnessed those who were left behind in the church. They cried out, shouting and running, realizing that it was too late. They abandoned the church in their anguish, crying to the Lord, Why have you forsaken us? Lord, take us with you. But alas, their pleas fell on deaf ears, for it was indeed too late. Shortly after, the Lord guided me to the streets, where chaos, disorder, and confusion reigned due to the momentous events that had unfolded. I witnessed car collisions, as drivers who had been raptured left their vehicles behind, their clothes remaining as a testament to their newfound spiritual rebirth. They had been caught up in the air to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. The earth was in a state of turmoil, and I observed the unfolding events from above, alongside the Lord. Suddenly, my attention was drawn to a cloud in space, gradually approaching the earth. This dark cloud, as described in Revelation chapter 9 verses 1 to 3, cast its shadow upon the earth, obscuring the sun and the air with its smoke. From within this cloud, countless demons emerged, taking on various forms and shapes. They spread across the face of the earth, surrounding it entirely. I witnessed these malevolent creatures invading the earth, their presence adding to the confusion and trauma experienced by the remaining inhabitants. The people, already bewildered by the disappearance of many, now found themselves mingling with a multitude of evil spirits. In one instance, I saw a man of God being assaulted by his own congregation, who held him responsible for their lack of preparation and understanding regarding the Lord's return. The pastor endured severe beatings from those who blamed him. On top of a towering building, there stood a young man and his friends. In their desperation, they confessed their sins and repented. However, this was an ill-timed repentance, for it was now too late. From the height of that fifty-story building, I watched as the young man and his friends, having confessed their sins, chose to jump. They plummeted to the ground, hitting it with great force. Despite their bodies being broken and in excruciating pain, death eluded them. They found themselves trapped in a state of agonizing torment. One of them cried out, questioning why death had not claimed them. How is it that we are not dead? We should have perished. I would rather die than endure this torment, he lamented. Suddenly, in an instant, we found ourselves inside a very small church. As I landed within its walls, the piercing screams and terror-stricken cries of the people filled the air. I noticed that the pastor of the church had been left behind, and he lamented his fate, overwhelmed by sorrow. Curious, I turned to the Holy Spirit and inquired about the reason for the pastor's exclusion. He replied, No deceiver, no purveyor of darkness shall enter the kingdom of heaven. 
This is why the pastor remains here to endure the trials of the Great Tribulation. In that moment, I witnessed the other members of the church who had also been left behind. They gathered around the pastor, their anger and frustration directed towards him. One by one, they grasped his legs, blaming him for their predicament, shouting, It is because of you that we are stranded in this place. It is your fault. We followed you, and because of you, we were not raptured to meet the Lord. Their anger escalated, and they began to tear at his body. Yet despite the brutality inflicted upon him, the pastor could not die. The word of the Lord in Revelation chapter 9 verse 6 rang true. In those days, people will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will flee from them. Beloved, there is no longer any excuse for ignorance, for you are reading these words. It is no longer acceptable to claim ignorance of the rapture and the great tribulation, for soon it will be too late. The time is now. The time is now to surrender, for Christ is coming for a holy church, unblemished, and without wrinkle. Today is the day. Today is the time to yield. I solemnly warn you, my friend and brother, who may be toying with God, for the Lord has shown me the multitude of people left behind and the tremendous chaos and upheaval that engulfed the earth. Unprecedented calamity befell the land, changing it in ways never seen before and never to be seen again. Later, the Lord transported me back to the depths of the underworld, where demons were imprisoned in hell. We arrived in the Valley of Demons, descending upon it in a matter of seconds. As I surveyed the surroundings, I noticed a significant shift in the atmosphere compared to my previous encounter. There was a change in the activity within the Valley of Demons. The demons in this section of hell, known as the Valley of Demons, were now mobilized, assembled, and ready. The valley, once shrouded in darkness, was now clear as the demons gathered together, preparing to emerge onto the earth. Their eagerness to rise to the surface was palpable as they stood on the brink of leaving their dark abode. Previously, when I beheld the Valley of Demons, it was obscured by darkness and fog. However, this time the Lord allowed me to witness the unfolding events with clarity. I saw that we were walking on a dry expanse of land, no longer shrouded in the mist of despair. In that moment, I witnessed the imprisoned evil spirits that had been confined in this place for countless years. They had assembled as a formidable battalion, ready for deployment on the surface of the earth. It was the first time they would operate directly on earth. Suddenly, these malevolent spirits began to rise, ascending through a gateway that led them to the surface. A demonic angel commanded them, addressing the assembled battalion of dark forces and demons, declaring, The time has come for you to rise. The appointed hour to invade the surface of the earth is upon us. It is time for you to conquer and take control of the world of mankind. Go now and fulfill my command. As the Prince of Demons addressed the battalions of dark forces, I witnessed a portal opening, a hollow doorway through which the demons entered, emerging onto the surface. This Prince of Hell motivated his forces, urging them to march and invade, for the time had arrived. They were prepared for this moment over thousands of years. He commanded them to take control of the earth, for the dwellers of the earth were destined to suffer. Now was the time. Thousands of demons, previously held captive in prison, entered the portal leading to the surface of the earth. The Lord transported me, and we followed these demons through the portal, leading us to the earth's atmosphere. I beheld the atmosphere filled with demonic spirits as they emerged from the valley of demons and ascended into the air. Among them were massive demons with scorpion-like tails. They seized the inhabitants of the earth, inflicting torment upon them. These demons, trained and prepared in the Valley of Demons, unleashed suffering upon the earth's inhabitants. Great chaos engulfed the earth. During this period, the Holy Spirit was removed from the earth, no longer present. Consequently, evil spirits and demons gained complete control over the earth. The gates of hell remained open, and demons continued to pour forth from their valley. Beloved, peace vanished from the earth. The Holy Spirit's absence contributed to the absence of peace. In this state many people on earth attempted to end their lives, seeking escape from their torment. But death eluded them as they could not find release. I witnessed the immense suffering of countless individuals and my heart wept. Lamentations filled the air as people mourned and lamented together. There was no longer any opportunity for redemption. The Lord instructed me to warn the church about everything I had witnessed, for it was on the brink of unfolding. Jesus said, I grant the church a little more time for repentance, 
for the time of grace is drawing to a close. There remains but a brief period. We are in the final generation. Dear brothers and sisters, as you read this testimony, I implore you to seize this moment and turn to Jesus Christ, repenting of your sins. For he is coming soon for a bride that is pure and unblemished. However, the church is not yet prepared. It slumbers in complacency, seeking after worldly pleasures and becoming enamored with the transient things of this earth. God's people have become entangled in the affairs of this terrestrial life, while the Bible instructs us to fix our gaze upon Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. The scriptures admonish us not to love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father does not abide in them. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life, does not come from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires are passing away, but whoever does the will of God remains forever. Now is the time for you to rise up and reflect upon the fact that Christ is waiting for you. He longs for you to proclaim the Holy Gospel, to share the word of the Lord in season and out of season. I want to end this part of my testimony with these powerful verses from Revelation chapter 9 verses 1 to 21. The fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. When he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and sky were darkened by the smoke from the abyss. And out of the smoke, locusts came down on the earth and were given power like that of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were not allowed to kill them, but only to torture them for five months. And the agony they suffered was like that of the sting of a scorpion when it strikes. During those days, people will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. The locusts looked like horses prepared for battle. On their heads they wore something like crowns of gold, and their faces resembled human faces. Their hair was like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle. They had tails with stingers, like scorpions, and in their tails they had power to torment people for five months. They had as king over them the angel of the abyss, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek is Apollyon, that is, destroyer. The first woe is past, two other woes are yet to come. The sixth angel sounded his trumpet, and I heard a voice coming from the four horns of the golden altar that is before God. It said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. And the four angels who had been kept ready for this very hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. The number of the mounted troops was twice ten thousand times ten thousand. I heard their number. The horses and riders I saw in my vision looked like this. Their breastplates were fiery red, dark blue, and yellow as sulfur. The heads of the horses resembled the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and sulfur. A third of mankind was killed by the three plagues of fire, smoke, and sulfur that came out of their mouths. The power of the horses was in their mouths and in their tails, for their tails were like snakes, having heads with which they inflict injury. The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the work of their hands. They did not stop worshipping demons, and idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood, idols that cannot see or hear or walk. Nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, their sexual immorality, or their thefts. May the mercy and grace of God be with you all who have Him as your Lord and Savior. My dear friends, we will be sharing the continuation of Cesar's extraordinary testimony in our next video. After learning about his vision, I was in awe about the things he saw. I would never wish to be one of those who will be left behind on earth to face and endure the Great Tribulation. What about you? Have you ever had any dreams or visions about the Great Tribulation? Let me know in the comments section below. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. 
Stay safe and I'll see you in our next video.